presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox We are Southeast. From City Field in New York, it is time for Braves baseball. Tonight it's game two of three as the Braves try to play the role of the spoiler once again. Last night they knocked off the Mets by a final score of seven to three. Hi again, friends. Joe and Chip, welcome to the ballpark. The Braves had a great time last night knocking off Noah Syndergaard and the Mets. First win for Aaron Blair. And winning games against the Mets has become a very nice habit for the man getting the ball tonight for the Braves, and that's right-hander Julio Tehran. Well, and the team will try to make it five in a row here at City Field against the Mets, and who better to have on the mound than Julio Tehran? He has owned the Mets in his career, especially in recent days. You're going to see some video here from Father's Day when he threw a complete game, one hit shutout at the Metropolitans. He has been dazzling to New York. He's the last guy they wanted to see on the mound tonight in a game that they desperately need to win to stay atop the wild card standings in the National League. Julio's only given up a couple of runs in his last 30 innings against New York. You see that there in the bottom line. That's an 060 ERA. Lifetime six and three. He's got a winning record here in this ballpark too. And he had to be thrilled to death with the way the Braves scored runs last night. It's 19 straight games, Joe, for the Braves with eight or more hits. And we know that Julio historically this year has been one of the least supported starting pitchers in Major League Baseball. So maybe the worm is, worm is turning for him as well. I agree with that. And this is a rematch of two guys, Robert Gasol is going for the Mets. The Braves got some runs off Gasselman in Atlanta. They'd like to get a few more tonight and extend that to 20 games with at least eight hits. Well, Dansby Swanson had three of those hits last night. He's back in the lineup tonight. When we come back, Paul Bird will talk about the dazzling Braves rookie start against the New York Mets. That and more as we continue from City Field after a break. Presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff, low price, every day. 
The bright lights of Broadway in the Big Apple haven't phased Dansby Swanson, who in 2004 as a 10-year-old was selected from over 100 kids to appear in a promotion for the Aflac All-American High School Baseball Classic. Earlier today, Paul Bird caught up with the now 22-year-old Dansby about his small screen debut. Thanks so much here with Dansby Swanson. I got to tell you, man, before it all began up here, you were a star on camera back in 2004 with your commercial. Uh, what can we see in those videos? Well, it's pretty funny. I helped uh, some of the media people dig it up because uh, they had no idea that I was in a commercial. And yes, 2004, uh, Affleck, uh, baseball commercials, pretty funny. And I pretty much looked the same, except for I didn't have long hair back then. And uh, the mannerisms were still pretty much the same. Field ground balls the same. Uh, Everything's pretty much the same as it is now. It's just I was a little bit younger. What can we specifically look at when you approach the ball back when you were 10 as to now? Uh, still field the ball out front. Uh, try and come get it and get yourself in the best position to throw. So pretty much the same. I had my dad taught me when I was a little baby. Great stuff, man. Star on the field. He's got the hair to be a movie star after this is all over with. So, yeah, it all started way back when he was 10. More Braves Mets coming back next. Is sponsored by Delta Airlines, your local Ford dealer, and Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience sports. Mazda. It's another glorious sunset here in New York at City Field in Flushing, where the Braves are taking on the New York Mets and their skipper Terry Collins. The Mets still in the playoff picture in the National League. They are in the wild card, and if the playoffs stop today, here's how, or started today, I should say, here's how the playoff races would match up in the National League. Well the Cubs have secured uh, home field advantage for sure with 95 wins uh, Washington with a three game lead over the Dodgers in case they meet up uh, they would host the first couple of games in Washington over the Dodgers but the wild cards where it's all happening and the Mets have a one game lead now over the Giants in St. Louis Giants lost last night in the ninth inning again St. Louis defeated Colorado and another big game at Dodger Stadium tonight Cueto for the Giants and Rich Hill for the Dodgers as they go head to head again. And if three teams end up tied for the National League Wild Card, Giants, Cardinals, and Mets, New York could play as many as four games in six days to determine <laughs> if they could play the Cubs 
in the uh, first round of postseason play. But we got to worry about Robert Gasselman before we worry about the playoffs tonight. Well, they're hoping guys like Gasselman will help them get where they need to be and clinch a spot in the wild card without having to play any playoff games just for that. September 9th, five innings, seven hits, four runs. Those seven hits were scattered among every position player on the team, with the exception of uh, Ender Enciarte, who went 0 for 3 with a strikeout. Everybody else had one hit, including Matt Kemp, who had a homer, Jace Peterson, who had a double. We'll see if the Braves learned anything and can get to him early tonight. 23 years old, 6'4, 200 pounds, out of Santa Monica, California. Low 90s, sometimes mid 90s fastball, slider change in curve. And I don't envy him facing this Braves lineup, a lineup that's seen Atlanta win three consecutive games, one through eight. Everybody is swinging the bat exceptionally well, especially so Freddie Freeman. He's got a 23 game hit streak. Kemp and Marquez, each with 11 gamers. Tyler Flowers has hit safely in his last six. So Kasselman's going to have his hands full tonight with the Atlanta Braves and these are the offensive ranks since the end of August. Uh, you just got to love what they're doing. 300 team average. Are you kidding me. 313. They've now moved into a tie for first in doubles third in OPS and uh, trying to make it 19 make it 20 in a row with at least eight plus hits. So the man that's been setting the table so well for the Braves will get things started again tonight. It's Ender Inciarte. Ender was one for four with the run scored last night. And he has 14 hits this year against the Mets. And the first of the night from Gaselman is off the plate, says Tony Randazzo, our home plate umpire. One ball, no strikes. A 77 degree humid night here in Gotham as that one's out of play. And an even count. The Mets have won 20 of their last 28 games. They've done that work without Harvey, without Mats. As this one's grounded to Loney at first, an easy play, one man down. Jacob DeGrom's pitched less than 10 innings in this stretch, yet the Mets lead the wild card race remarkably because guys like Gasilman have really stepped up in rotation for Terry Collins. And they need him to tonight in the wake of that short and bad outing by Cindergaard last night. Something that no one saw coming if you were a New York Met fan. One out for Adonis. He was 0 for 5 last night. He's hitting 270, 13 homers, 58 RBIs. Yeah, a rare 0 for 5 for him. And that one's driven down the right field line and headed for the corner. Garcia's on his way to second base. Adonis Garcia with his 28th double now has a hit in 17 of his last 20 games. And he sets the table for Freddie Freeman with one out. It's been uncanny how these guys who if they go without a hit one night they come back with a big night the next night. Kind of make up for it. Not at all where Gaselman wanted that one. He was mad at himself. And the last guy the Mets wanted to see with a runner in scoring position is the man in the batter's box. I asked Terry Collins before the game I said what are you guys going to do to try to pitch to or away from Freddie Freeman and he said after I saw him hit the ball the pitch last night from Syndergaard that was about two inches off the ground a breaking ball I realized there is no way to pitch him. Well, that was only one of his four hits last night. Yeah. It's four for five with a home run. I'd say he picked up the pace a little. There's a good pitch, one ball, two strikes. Pretty good bite on that pitch. He was only half joking when he said he got to the ballpark with almost nothing in the tank. With Chelsea and maybe Charlie back home. Flew up yesterday and he said he got by on caffeine and adrenaline. And it 
talking to him before the game today. He slept very well last night and is ready to go, obviously, here in game two. Two balls, two strikes. Driven down the line, out of play. Freddie did say, though, that you know, it's kind of funny. I've started to get in the habit of waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning all of a sudden. <laughs> so he did say he had a, a 3 a.m. wake up like, hey, where am I? So I'm sure he's getting used to that. Two balls, two strikes. Garcia, good lead out at second base. And Gasselman just missed. It was a good pitch. Not necessarily because he just missed throwing a strike, but a good spot to go to get Freddie to try to fish for it, and he didn't. And we're in the landing pattern. Got him, chase a high slider. And Freeman strikes out, runner at second, two away. And Gasselman has his first punch out of the game. Yeah, it was just bad enough to be a good pitch. So a momentary sigh of relief for the Mets as Matt Kemp now stands in. Had a two hit game, made two great catches last night. And he's still one RBI away from number 100 for the year. 30 of his 99 RBIs have come since joining the Braves. Still at second with two outs, and now an 0-2 pitch. High target asked for, but delivered up and in. Head in the count, they can now try to go down and away and see if. He'll go for it. Too far. Selman's a California kid. I'll bet he grew up watching Matt Kemp. Now he's facing him as a Met. Two balls, two strikes. And he just struck him out. Pretty impressive back to back strikeouts of Freeman and Kemp. Garcia left stranded. Julio Tehran goes to work when we come back.
Gibbs his warm up tosses he's set to face the Mets in game two tonight as we told you earlier Julio has been dominant against New York 28th start of the year and as we have been telling you all year long he's been suffering from a lack of run support and that coincides with him being five and ten because seven times this year he has started a game and not allowed any runs only Greg Maddox in 2002 has more starts like that pretty good company for Julio his four keys to pitching success tonight it all ties together fifty three percent of the Mets runs come from home runs two of the three last night did keep the ball in the ballpark and they are five for fifty one with runners in scoring position their last seven games that means even when they get guys on they are having trouble scoring runs keep it in the yard make good pitches when you got guys in scoring position you can throw a shutout tonight. There's the Mets lineup. A couple of changes for them. Jay Bruce is back in there. Travis Darno as well behind the plate. And the attack starts with Jose Reyes leading off. Reyes was 0 for 4 last night. He's batting 267 for the year. Has struck out once, hit the ball in the air three other times, which is exactly what you want him to try to do. Garcia, even with the bag at third, and as Julio missed up and away. And he's really the only guy in their lineup with any speed. Keep him off the bases. You don't have to worry too much about holding runners. That's popped foul and out of play. It's two and two. And that number you mentioned about the Mets and the percentage of runs via the home run is well fantastic when you're getting them, but when you don't, you have nights like they had last night. New York has just 37 stolen bases as a club. They entered this series hitting 214 as a team with runners in scoring position. Bounding ball right side. Freeman's got it. Tehran broke immediately to the bag and beat Reyes by a step. When the story of the New York Mets for 2016 is written, it'll be about all the injuries they've had to try to play through, especially to their starting rotation. But the other side of it will be lack of hitting with runners in scoring position. And Terry said before the game, it's been going on since day one of this season. So my question to you is as a former major league player how sustainable is an offense like the one the Mets have it's very dangerous no question but how sustainable is that should they make it into postseason play and advance past the wild card game uh, it's no different than it was last year really I mean that's it's kind of what got them to the World Series was their ability to hit home runs. Thank you Daniel Murphy and Michael Conforto. Ground ball by his dribble Cabrera and that's out of the glove of Jace Peterson. As Dribble Cabrera's aboard with a one out hit. But that's a challenge. Murphy's now a national, and Conforto isn't hitting this year like he did last year. I don't know if Jace was moving on that play, like moving a little to his left when the ball was pitched. It's almost like he got caught leaning a little bit and wasn't able to get to it. One on one out here's Johannes Cespedes. He was 0 for 4 last night. That snapped a modest three game hit streak for him. And he had a wicked cut, fouled it straight back. Strike one. But it's three for nine in his career against Julio. He's got 30 homers. And 13 of his 81 runs batted in have come this month. Good slider. And of those 200. 
23 homers. They've hit 103 of them in their home ballpark. And this is a terrific pitcher's park. You know, I'm beginning to wonder about that, Chip. Uh, I agree with you. I've always thought of it as a good pitcher's park, but when you look around, and it's only 358 to straightaway left and 370 to the alley. That's a real short distance in left and right. Well, now that you mention it, I'd forgotten they've actually moved the fences in in both left and in right center to give the hitters a little more help. Yeah. It's a little more hitter friendly than we give this park credit for it. Again, we're only here nine times a year. Yeah. The, the 370 in front of their bullpen, you think about Turner Field, that's 390 in that same spot at Turner Field. Well, maybe there's another explanation. First, the one two pitch. Driven foul. Maybe there's just not as much nitrogen here as most other ball parks. I think there was last night. You know, after the rain, there was a little more nitrogen, and Rivera was able to capitalize. So was Freddie Freeman. Tonight, not so much. Yeah. See what happens. <laughs> no movement at all by his dribble Cabrera at first. This place looks outside. Two and two. Not an easy lineup to navigate your way through for Julio. Granderson's been hot. TJ Rivera follows him. Bruce Loney, Darno, and Gasilman. Sliders away, away, away. Got ahead of the count quickly. All even the foul balls have been off to the right on pitches away from him, breaking away from him. Julio's start when he matched up with Gaselman at Turner Field on September 9th. Pitched well, six innings, just two runs. Gave up a home run to Granderson. But left with the lead, the bullpen gave up four runs. That was the bad night for Mauricio Cabrera. Full count pitch. Let's see if Cabrera's running. He is. And it's tipped and caught. The throw to second will be late. So Tehran strikes out Cespedes. Cabrera slides in safely at second. He stands there for Curtis Granderson. But now there are two outs for the Mets. Yeah, it looked like Cespedes did him a favor out of in ball four. Well, here might be the hottest hitter against the Braves, Curtis Granderson. Three for four last night. And he's five for his last six with a couple of homers. Getting back to the final game with the Twins. And he's one guy that they need to improve this department. If he's going to bat clean up, they've got to have him come through with some two out knocks. Pushed him off the plate. Leo's got a good fastball tonight. One ball, one strike.
pretty pitch. Yeah, took a little off and really pinpointed it. So only Derek Norris has struggled more with runners in scoring position than Curtis Granderson. Now he's got an even count. Skipped up there. It's three and two. I know he doesn't want to think this way with a, with a base open. He wants to be aggressive, especially in the first inning. But it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if he put him on, if he didn't give in, walked him, and worked to Rivera. Good choice, curveball. As Joe mentioned, their runners in scoring position success has been lacking. Three all balls, two strikes. All singles in those five hits. High fly ball right that'll chase Marquecas back a few steps. And Julio Tehran escapes the bottom of the first. We go to the second, no score, game two, Braves and Mets in New York. Games at Turner Field. Now is your chance to help us pick the team that should represent 20 great years of baseball at the TED. Voting for the Toyota All Turner Field team is now open. Tell us who you think should man each of the infield and outfield spots with a full five man All Turner Field pitching rotation. Go to Braves.com slash Turner Field team through September 26th and cast your vote. Yeah, and that team is going to be revealed on Braves Live a week from tonight. So we encourage you to get your votes in. They will be tallied soon. And there will be some special guests out on the plaza where Jerome and the gang will be manning that reveal next Tuesday night. Well, I don't know who the players are going to be. I have a pretty good idea who the manager is going to be. Now, he might be the guy revealing himself. Out in center field, or out in right field. Maybe I should have put that a different way. I sure hope everybody knew what you meant. His yeah. Nick Marcakis leads off a score a second. Nick two for five with a run last night. And that's in for a strike. Nick's got an 11 game hitting streak working. 16 hits in his last 42 tries.
sharply hit and a tricky hop handled by Loney who's always been an excellent defensive infielder. And there's the first down Time for our Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot feature and it's Tyler Flowers turn tonight. Tyler's hit in six straight he had a base hit last night one for four and his numbers the last 25 games 17 RBI's in his last 25. And getting a lot of work. He's complimenting him today on how trim he looks. He's he's dropped quite a bit of weight. Said he's working on it to be a little trimmer. And it shows. Ripped down a play. It's. Oh and two. Well, if he keeps that up, he will have no future in the broadcast booth. That's correct. There are expectations <laughs> up here. <laughs> yes, there are. Two strikes, one out, and upstairs. From Robert Kesselman, a 13th round pick by the Mets five years ago. That's hit to the left side. Reyes has it and his throw to first. He's in plenty of time for the second out. I remember saying about Gasolman in Atlanta that I like I like him. I like his arm action. He's got a good uh, downer breaking ball that we just saw there for the ground out. His numbers in the minor leagues are nothing to write home about. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. It's really amazing what they've been able to accomplish with this guy with Lugo. Neither one of them had terrific seasons at Triple A for the Mets this year, but out of desperation, the Mets felt these were the two most ready players, and they've pitched a whole lot better than those numbers. Yeah, Binghamton not so bad. 2.71 ERA, just no luck in the win-loss, but with Vegas. Son, if you go one and five with a six ERA, we're going to call you up. <laughs> well, that's a hitter's league, right? Yeah. Dan Worth in there as pitching coach. He's obviously done some good work with him. No swing. And I, I say that the it's a hitter's league or a hitter's park or a hitter's team, tongue in cheek to a certain degree. And that's had the one, two, and three hitters in the Pacific Coast League this year, batting average. And all three of them are here with the big club. There's a strike. Well, they do have hope. They hope Syndergaard's going to bounce back fine in five days. And they hope they'll get Steven Matz back. As that one's cut on and missed. Three up, three down for Gaselman. He's got three strikeouts in his first two innings of work. TJ Rivera leads off for New York when we come back.
Toyota dealers, Let's Go Places, the Georgia Lottery, and Zaxby's Indescribably Good. Pretty night, but it's a humid night as the Braves and Mets meet for the second time in the series. Tehran and Gasoman. Julio out for his second frame with TJ Rivera, Jay Bruce, and James Loney expected to hit. Mention the Mets have all three of the top three hitters in the Pacific Coast League. Well, here's numero uno, TJ Rivera. Terrific offensive year with Vegas. And he's off to a good start in the big leagues. Three homers, nine RBIs. In fact, he's homered in back to back games. He hit a two run shot here last night. He has moved front and center for the Mets in terms of postseason possibilities with respect to his bat. And playing second base, they can keep Kelly Johnson on the bench as a left handed pinch hitter. Maybe platoon he and Kelly. But they're getting giving him a good long look here in crucial games. And the Mets have a decision to make at the end of the year. Do they bring Neil Walker back? Walker's out with a bad back. Unfortunately. As it's popped up, Flowers will shed the mask, but won't have a play. And it's one and two. Seventy plus degrees and about seventy plus percent humidity. And no breeze. Spoiled a good pitch there. Two and two. You missed it last night. Joe made a great comparison. You can get a good look at the facial features of TJ Rivera. Looks a little like A Rod. Better look, maybe, on the big jumbo scoreboard. There you go. There's a nice look. Boy, the soft focus makes a difference. Sure does for both of us. Full count pitch, base is empty. And a line drive over short. Rivera has a leadoff single, his second hit of the series. And Jay Bruce will be the batter. A lot of deep counts already for Julio. He's having to work hard on this humid night. Goes three and two here. Makes a good pitch with a slider, but Rivera's on it. Even three and two. Put a good swing on that pitch. Well, if there's a big mystery for the Mets, it's the man in the batter's box. Jay Bruce is in the midst of a three for 34 slide at the plate. Jumped on the first pitch and drives it toward left. Matt Kemp retreats and puts that away. And there's the first out. And the fans in New York aren't as forgiving as they are in Cincinnati for Jay Bruce. He's hitting a buck 80 since putting on a Mets uniform. Here's Loney. The Mets first baseman at 270 for the year. And he has killed the Braves. He's batting 424 against Atlanta pitching this year. Another good night last night. Three for four with a big double to center.
Wonder how much time Lucas Duda will get in the final two weeks for New York. He played the other day against Minnesota, had a couple of at bats, missed a lot of time with a stress fracture in his lower back. Yeah, I think it was Sunday before the Braves came to town. Loney had a big night last night, so he's back in there tonight against Tehran. Line into right center field. That's down for a hit. Rivera's going to stop at second. And James Loney continues his torrid pace against the Braves. Two on, one out. And Travis Darno, the Mets catcher, is coming up. Well, when Duda got hurt, the Mets were in a bad way. They was, they'd already lost David Wright. Now they've lost their other corner infielder, and they needed to go find someone. And they found James Loney, a veteran and a 284 career hitter, in Triple A with the Padres. So the Mets did what everybody else does. They went to San Diego and said, "We need a good player." And the Padres, of course, obliged, since he was in Triple A. Now he's at first base with New York. And they threaten in the second. Darno, a 250 average. Uh, double play situation here, but the Braves have Jace Peterson near the bag at second. And Swanson pretty much in his normal position, but the way we've seen Darno in the past, he's pulled that ball in the hole between short and third a lot. Darno six for 49 this year with runners in scoring position. He's got Rivera out at second base. Served foul. That was a funny swing. I know he's had his share of injuries in the past. Upstairs, and Darno sent tumbling back. High target called for, delivered high and in. That looks familiar. Same thing they did to Kemp. Late reacting to that. Fly ball headed toward right center. Ender is there. Rivera is going to tag. He'll take third. And now Gaselman will be the batter with men at the corners and two out. Zellman was a pitcher and third baseman in high school. And he hit for a lot of power. With Westchester High School. Also was a state basketball champion. Yeah, good athlete. But 0 for 8, 7 strikeouts. Don't let this guy put you down a run. He pushed a punt. Freeman's going to field it and apply the tag. And that will end the inning. The Mets send five to the plate. They got two hits, but no runs. We're off to the third.
nothing. Yep, it's nothing, nothing. Top of the third. And how about Dansby Swanson, the night he had last night? And I got to tell you, a really cool moment when Brian Snicker was asked about Swanson and we were ready for him to talk about his arm, his footwork, his bat. He wanted to talk about his humility and his ability to handle success. And he said, guys, when he was called up, there was a huge billboard in Atlanta that said, welcome back, Dansby Swanson. Welcome home. And you know what? He said he can have a conversation with Danzi, the first overall pick. Nothing has overwhelmed him. And he said he is a great person first with great parents. So, guys, we got a future all-star here in Atlanta on the field and certainly one off. Back to you guys. Couldn't agree more, Paul. Good family. Good for you, young lady. You picked a good one. Dansby series off to an excellent start three hits last night three RBI's last night his first big league three hit game came against the Mets back in Atlanta he added another one here 24 hours ago and he's our Zaxby's indescribably good feature yeah Dansby is our Zaxby's 400 his last 12 games and wearing the Mets out a lot of success on the road. Saw Gazelman back in Atlanta had a hit. He's loaded back. And he's pushed off the plate to even the count. Pretty good heater, too, at 94. Thing for Gaselman that stands out. He's only given up one home run in 28 and a third innings. Pretty good for the start of your career. That one home run was hit by Matt Kemp. Chopper over the mound at the second base back. Rivera got to it, but no chance to get Dansby Swanson. And Dansby has his fourth hit of the series. An infield single, and that'll bring Julio Tehran to the plate. Lead off man aboard and the best bunting pitcher, maybe the best bunting player on the team coming up. Julio has 10 sacrifices on the year. Let's see if he can help himself. First one's fouled away, a strike. Got the bat at the top of the zone, and he's up in the front of the box. He just didn't get that one. That one either. Now it's 0 2. That one, he kind of brought the bat back. He got it out front and brought it back, kind of poked at it. It's not like him. There you go. More testament to the fact that he's a good bunner.
Another 0 2 pitch instead to first. He got it down somehow. That spun him out of the batter's box, and Tehran will be credited with a sacrifice. How in the world did he make contact with that pitch? I don't know. I'm just glad it didn't hit him on the hand. No, it didn't come anywhere near his hand. It was just running in on him. Nice job. <laughs> So Tehran lays down his 11th sacrifice. Nice you know, bunning with choreography. Yeah, right. That is New York. And things sitting pretty for Ender Inciarte. He tries a bunt of his own, but fouled it away. A strike. Last 20 games, Swanson's gotten on base to a 380 on base percentage. And tied for the most hits since the All Star break. And it just missed for Ender. Brave shortstop playing in his 28th game. He's got a chance to score his 14th run here. He's batted eighth most of the season. Let's see if Ender can bring him home. One ball, one strike. I'll bet Chip, and I don't, I don't have any numbers to back it up. I'm just in my mind's eye thinking about the way the Braves have been hit the ball. That all these hits they've accumulated since the All Star break, or since August 1st, wherever you want to go. At least half of them have got to be to the opposite field for, for the whole as a team. Everybody's had a good approach of hitting the ball where it's pitched, shortening up their swings with two strikes. Ender's had a lot that way. Freddie's had a lot that way. Garcia's had a lot the opposite way. In my mind's eye, I go back to that drill that. We show the fans back home that Kevin Seitzer was initiating in the batting cage. He had it working tonight. Did he? Mm -hmm. Good hitters count here. Three balls at a strike. And a shot the other way, but it's into the suits. Full count. Garcia waits on deck. And like last night, when the Braves had 28, 29 foul balls off Noah Syndergaard, yes. same thing appears to be happening tonight. Well, I like the way Gaselman's not trying to throw 95 every pitch. It's nice to. Cruise along at 92, 93, and reach back for a little extra if you need it. He did just that there, but it got fouled off. That last pitch was at 95. And Ender takes ball four. That pitch in the dirt, first and second, one out. And here's Garcia, who doubled to right his first time up. These deep counts have forced up Gaselman's pitch count. He's two away from 50.
Bounce foul behind the plate, just like that. It's 0 2. If you were with us last night, when Adonis had a, a rare rough night at the plate, 0 for 5, he had three strikeouts. They were getting him out with change ups out in front, right at had the heart of the plate, but he was chasing them and they hadn't gotten to the plate and breaking balls in the dirt. It's a one two count. And he stayed alive somehow right off the end of the bat. He went up out of the zone that one pitch and that's that's fine. He didn't offer. But if they miss even a little bit with that high fastball. We've seen Adonis wear that pitch out that's sometimes shoulder high. Bouncing ball hit towards short. Backflip to Rivera. What a play. A slick double play. Breaks the Braves' hearts in the third. Cabrera to Rivera to Loney, and Gazelman is out of third inning trouble. As Drupal made a couple of dandy plays last night, we head to the home third where the top of the Mets order is coming up. Right stuff. Baseball is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. Right stuff. Low price every day. They've got their own field of dreams here at City Field in New York. Youngsters get a chance to. Smack the wiffle ball around and run the bases. They have their own giant scoreboard. That's cool. As Jose Reyes leads off for the Mets here in the third. Julio could use a quick inning. Grounded out his first time up. And 
drills this one at deep right. Marcakis will turn. It is high off the fence. Reyes around second on his way to third. He will make it with a sliding triple. And he almost hit it out of the 370 side. He got a high hanging breaking ball. I can't believe it stayed in the park. Oh boy right up in his eyes that slow curve. And then when it hit in the fence kind of got stuck in the padding look at that. It's kind of pinballed around and that may have been just enough to give him that extra base. So fourth triple for Reyes he's 90 feet away with nobody out. And Cabrera's coming up with a single already tonight. Yeah, his base hit tonight was a ground ball just out of the reach of Jace Peterson. Last night he hit the ball hard three times and didn't have anything to show for it. Look out at Tehran as that pitch was inside. 2 0. Oh. Well, they know Tehran pitches inside. They also know he's hit a few guys. Had a runner at second with two outs in the first. They had him first and third in the second. Couldn't score. And now a little fly ball hit down the line in left. That's going to drop in for a run scoring hit. Cabrera on his way to second. The throw is a little late. And with a left toe, as Dribble Cabrera holds the bag and he doubles home Reyes to make it 1 0 New York. He also broke his belt. And gets a quick swap with Tom Goodwin. Another breaking ball, another hanger. Tonight, uh, CNI ground ball, and now a little dunker in left, and he's got two hits. Oh, that's pretty good flexibility there. See that was swung on and belted, Chip. Yes, it was. So it's one nothing New York. Back to back extra base hits, and here's Cespedes. Julio's given up only three runs now against the Mets all year. Fastball, Cespedes didn't get it. Not aired that one out. That's a 56 and 27. 29 games over 500 when they score first. They're excellent pitching and a bullpen that's been terrific too. You can understand why that stat holds water. So Cabrera with a rare hit for the Mets with a man in scoring position. Now Julio tries to pick him off. 
Cabrera tweaks something. Popped up. Hands with Swanson says he's got it. He does. There's the first down. Now Granderson bats. Curtis fly out to end the first. Twenty-eight homers, fifty-one runs batted in for Granderson. Remember, most of the season he's been their leadoff hitter. Curveballs this inning have cost him a run. And now it's one and two. Anderson led off 80 times this year for the Mets. As Joe mentioned, he's their cleanup hitter tonight. This is his 14th game, batting fourth for New York. Fact entering play tonight, Granderson's batted first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. At least one time for New York. And now he's got a 2 2 count. That doesn't surprise me with all their injuries. Slow roller is going to trickle foul at the bag. Tough break for Tehran. Granderson back to the plate. And the injuries we're talking about, they are not to big players for Terry Collins. These are big names. David Wright's played 37 games. Neil Walker with 23 homers. KO'd after 113 games. Cespedes has missed time. Cabrera has missed time. Duda has missed a lot of time. He's only played in 40 games. That doesn't even mention the guys at the bottom of that list. The Sterling starting rotation for New York. But here they are with 80 wins and atop the wild card chase. The throw might have surprised Dansby Swanson. Well, it was a good idea and it looked like Dansby saved Cabrera there. He was going to get nailed with that throw. Well, we've been down that road once before, haven't we? Yeah. Cabrera still limping around out there. Keep shaking the left knee. It's the patella tendon that was giving him problems earlier this year. Ground ball to first. That one will stay fair. And Tehran to the bag. And Granderson's retired. There's the second out. Cabrera's 90 feet away for TJ Rivera. Get this guy limited to one run. You've done a good job after giving up a triple and a double to start the inning.
But again this is the frustrating problem for the Mets. You've got three four and five hitters up there and you're struggling to bring home a man from second base with nobody out. Cespedes popped out Granderson rolled out now it's up to the rookie Rivera to try to bring home Cabrera with the second run. Generous strike. Sure was. Braves and Mets have had a good season series and Atlanta has played them toe to toe. New York leads the season series nine to eight. Tonight, tomorrow to go. Sharply hit to second. But that's going to retire Rivera and the Mets. As Joe said, good job by Julio to limit the damage to only one run. Reyes scores for New York. Freddie Freeman will try to equal the score when we head to the fourth. The fourth inning you'll have the middle of the order coming up for the Braves who feature an offense that's been as hot as it's been for an extended period in a long long time. 19 straight games with at least eight hits. Longest streak in Atlanta history April to May of 98 when they had 20. So a chance to tie that record tonight. And they've got some work to do with two hits so far in Game two. But the right guys are up there. Freeman, Kemp, and Marcakis, all three of those men sporting double digit hit streaks. Some life on it running away from him. That seems to me what impressed us so much back in Atlanta. Nothing was straight from this guy. Out and comes back in on his hands. Freddie was one for three against him in Atlanta, but he struck out twice and he's already struck out once tonight. And you talk about hot. Freeman, Kemp, and Marcakis have got it working. The 
Right counts a ball and two strikes. Scoreboard shows it a 3 2 count, but the correct count is 2 and 2. And Freddie took one that backed up under the tomahawk. He can't believe it. And Gazelman strikes him out for a second time. One away here in the fourth. Fox Tracks has it at the top of the zone. Well, it's interesting. Pitch number one of that sequence was on yeah. the other side of the plate, same height, called a ball. That pitch, though, called a strike to end the at bat. So, one away for Kemp. He drives it toward right. Bruce drifts back, and plenty of room for him. Just like that, two down. Marquez hit a hard batted ground ball to James Loney, who scooped it up and beat him to the bag to start the second inning. That ball's hammered towards center. But uh, Zellman has a very easy fourth inning. And he has a shutdown frame, and more importantly, he's got a lead. To Turner Field and celebrate Oktoberfest on Thursday, September 29th. That package includes access to a pregame party with Oktoberfest inspired fall samplings and a frozen beer mug. You don't want to miss this party, especially because Tom Glavin might appear and wear his later hosen. Go to Braves.com slash Oktoberfest. We've seen that before. Glavin. Should be a good time. I like it when he wears that little yodeler hat. <laughs> you know those numbers you were talking about, Chip, for Jay Bruce.
whole new world playing for the Mets playing in New York not playing in the Great American Ballpark in Cincinnati and frankly for Jay Bruce first time he's been traded. Well that was a generous strike there too. Pulled toward first. Freeman's got that. Bruce is over two. And three hits in his last 36 at bats. Yeah, tough times for him. He has an option. The team has an option for extending his contract into next season. It remains to be seen if they will pick that up or if he'll become a free agent. Obviously depends on performance, I would assume, and also what Cespedes chooses to do. He has an opt-out in his contract, and if he leaves, well, Bruce might be a guy that could plug that gaping offensive hole. Loney jumps on the first pitch, drives it toward Kemp in left. That'll hang up for Matt. He'll run down two outs. One nothing New York on an Isdrubal Cabrera double last inning. He brought home Jose Reyes who tripled to lead off inning number three. Here's Darno. Fly down to center. Screen back our way and out of reach. One ball, one strike. Good game brewing down in Miami. Nationals and the Marlins. Jose Fernandez pitching on his home mound. No score in the sixth. That figures to be another matchup of Tehran and Fernandez on Sunday. Although we don't have the Pitchers announced yet by the Marlins that would figure to be the contest. Tanner Roark is going for his 16th win along with Fernandez tonight down in Miami. Marlins beat the Nationals 4 3 last night. Mile high pop headed for the stands, but it's going to curl back into fair territory. It sure did. And Matt Kemp is there, and he made that play a good five feet in fair ground. That was weird. Darno flies out. We have the fifth. Now a run.
hits tonight. One of the two hits an opposite field shot by Adonis Garcia and that's something we've seen a lot of haven't we. Yeah Gretchen looked this up for us and found out that since the all star break the Braves do indeed have more opposite field hits than any team in baseball. With one hundred and fifty six. That's good work. And good approach. With the help of. Kevin Seitzer and Jose Castro. Who worked their tails off tirelessly. Before and during the game. So here in the Braves fifth flowers Peterson and Dansby Swanson are coming up. Boy, Tyler's got a lot of colors working on it. He's got the red sleeve on. Got the flashy gloves. Blue armband. Yeah, the gloves, I, I don't really get the color combo. You've got kind of neon yellow fingers. You've got. The green hand protector and some red in there as well. Cabrera is going to throw him out. So Gazelman's done a heck of a job on Freeman, Kemp, Marcakis, and Flowers, all of whom have rather impressive hit streaks on the line. And none of those four men have either picked up a hit or even reached base tonight. Peterson struck out in his loan at bat. That was in the second. Selman coming off a no decision against Washington. No runs, five hits in five and two thirds of work against Washington's vaunted offense. Struck out four in that game. Well, when their big horse didn't do what he's supposed to do last night, that shifts a lot of weight to this guy who's only making his fifth big league start. Sharply hit by the right to Rivera. And Jace Peterson's the second out. I've got eight ground outs, four strikeouts, or eight outs via ground ball, including a double play. I'm not surprised at that, the way his ball's moving. And he's working that gum, isn't he? Swanson an infield hit. And a good rip at that pitch and foul that straight back. Seventy two pitches with two outs in the fifth. And now Dansby's ahead two balls at a strike. Terry Collins was an old infielder ask him today about his thoughts on Dansby Swanson and what he had seen. He goes well other than the fact we can't get him out. He said I really like his approach at the plate but I haven't seen him tested that much at shortstop. He said at least not against us. His fifth Braves batter, Dansby Swanson, is set down, and he will lead off the home fifth for New York with a one-run lead.
you can't count the Marlins out. They're only four back in the wild card race, and the reason you can't count them out, despite having to pass the Cardinals and Giants, they've got three games left with the Mets, and they've got three games left with the Mets in Miami, beginning next Monday. And they've just they've got to have a lot of help, otherwise, with the Cardinals and the Giants. You know the Braves at the beginning of the second half one of the buzzwords among the whole team you ask anybody in the clubhouse popped up toward first on a punt try and there's the first out of the inning things aren't weren't going so well for the Braves but one of the things that from the pride standpoint of the players was they didn't want to lose 100 games and we've heard John Coppola say the same thing. Braves don't want the first pick, you know, in the draft, and we don't want to lose 100 games. So, with that in mind, you don't want to call it a magic number, but the Braves need four more wins to make sure that doesn't happen in terms of the 100 loss season. And that's with 12 games to go, counting tonight. The way they're hitting the ball, that shouldn't be an issue. One oh count for Reyes who tripled off the fence and right now skies one to left and wasn't happy about that swing. Okay, the second out. Julio set down eight straight after the as Cabrera double. And here he is with two outs and the base is empty in the fifth inning. I think with this lineup. For the Mets might look like though, Chip, after we were talking about those injuries, if you plug David Wright in there, probably hitting third, move Cespedes to clean up, allow Granderson to move either into the second spot behind Reyes, put Duda in there in the middle of the lineup, it really would give the manager a lot of options for the Mets if he had all those guys at his disposal. Yeah, and then think about DeGrom and Harvey and Wheeler and all those guys too. Yeah, of course. I'm just thinking from the lineup standpoint though, that he's having to plug in guys like Rivera. They had to go get Loney. Uh, they may not have gone to get Jay Bruce had those guys all been healthy. Completely different configuration. They just had their corner infielders of nobody else. That's pulled foul past Tom Goodwin. Lagaris too for that matter. David Wright went to the disabled list on June the third. A herniated disc in his neck. Man. Walker back surgery. Ruggiano left shoulder problems niece a left knee left shoulder tightness for Mats. Matt Harvey the thoracic outlet surgery done for the year. If I were going to guess about those pitchers and it's just my opinion that the guys that they're concerned the most about would be DeGrom and Mats. They have bright futures the young guys controllable. And needless to say very good. And the way I read DeGrom's situation, there's irritation around the nerve, scar tissue buildup from his previous Tommy John surgery. Okay. That they will have to clear up. Well, I've, I've known some guys in the past that had to have their ulnar nerve moved, and they take it out of that slot in your elbow and move it up to the side. It's no simple task, and it's certainly not like recovering from Tommy John, but it takes a while. For that all to, t to heal and be ready to go. And I'm only assuming that in the case of Matt Harvey, his ETA would be next year, a la Mike Fultonevich, who had similar surgery. They should only hope that he bounces back like Fulte has. Ball four. Cabrera's aboard for a third time, and that's not what Julio wanted to do because Cespedes is coming up with a man aboard, albeit with two outs. Saw Mike today. He was getting some running in. He'd been throwing, so I don't know if he's uh, scheduled a pitch in Miami, but we might see him in that series. Two 
Tomorrow night we've got Ryan Weber and Bartolo Colon. As Cespedes stares down Julio with a one nothing lead. He took a fastball right down the middle. Shallow right center. Jace drifts back. He's there. And Tehran pitches around the two out walk. Off we go to the sixth inning. Julio will lead off. It's 1 0 Metropolitans. He's going to get the ball for New York in game three here tomorrow night. And when he pitches, it's often not very fun for the Braves' offense. No, not usually, but you know what? We get to see Scherzer on a regular basis, Strasburg on a re regular basis, Jose Fernandez in this division. I'd rather watch him pitch than any of them. I really would. I love watching him work. In his last start, he picked up his 230th win. That's amazing. He passed Louis Tian for third most on the all time Latin American born pitchers win list. And he'll try to make it 231 here tomorrow night. The Braves hope to come back for Julio Tehran. Unfortunately, Robert Gasselman has cooled off the Braves' bats. He's got a two hit shutout through five. That's fouled off the left leg of the home plate umpire Tony Randazzo. One and two. Bartolo Colon's last start against the Braves at Turner Field. He got a no decision. The Braves won the game four to three in extra innings, and he got knocked around a little bit. Six innings, only four hits, but three runs, and two of the hits were homers. Marquecas and Kemp both took him deep. Talk about it, I'm sure, at length tomorrow night, but with all the Mets pitching injuries, don't the Mets strongly have to consider bringing Bartolo Colon back next year? You would think. It's Bill Miller pointing at. They just have a contact lens problem. So got it squared away. <laughs> Met a Cabrera about something. Doubled over Cabrera laughing.
Julio is struck out looking. That's six for Gazelman. And he's on a roll now. That gives him eight consecutive hitters retired. And he struck out six against the Braves on September 9th in five innings. So time to go to work, top of the order. Braves have had three base runners. Inciarte was one of them. A third inning walk. He was erased on a double play. And that's down and in, ball one. He is in and out and up and down. He took the words right out of my mouth. Breaking ball in, back foot, breaking ball in, and then that sinker away. Sharply hit. That's going to sneak through for a base hit. So Enciarte aboard with one out. His 90th hit since the break. And he's got another hit streak going. That's his fifth game in a row with at least one hit. And he represents the tying run. And folks, that's 54 games with a hit out of his last 58. 54 of 58. Amazing. A double and a double play for Adonis tonight. Ciarte stolen 15 bases. Let's see if Brian Snicker tries to force the issue here with one out. He won't have to. A base hit to left. And Ciarte will round the bag and slam on the brakes. So two on, one away, and Freddie Freeman is licking his chops. He's been struck out twice. And he's thinking about doing some serious damage here in the top of the sixth inning. Gaselman has made real good pitches on Freddie tonight to strike him out swinging in the first on a pitch up and away. And then he got a call at the top of the zone for a call third strike in the fourth. But he's worked him hard in and out, in and out. And maybe a, an encouraging reminder from Dan Worth in here to tell him just that. He got one out, and as you pointed out, Chip, he's gotten a lot of ground balls tonight. He needs another one, and their bullpen will get busy. Georgia native Josh Smoker included. A little buzz in the crowd now with Freddie up there. Brown ball foul at first. Nothing in one. And Mr. Met could not come up with a souvenir. I'm sure those people behind him are really enjoying the game. One one. Coming into play tonight. The league hitting two seventeen against Gaselman with runners in scoring position. Way high. Two balls and a strike. That third time through the order that Brian Snitker talks about a lot coming to fruition here for Gaselman. Back to back hits by NCRT and Garcia. Freeman now ahead in the count. And not close. Well, all of a sudden it's not as easy when you're blowing through guys eight or nine in a row and nobody on base. 
you're pretty loose armed and you're hitting your spots pretty good but when you've got the hottest hitter in the game up there and two on all of a sudden it's a little harder to hit that that bottom of the zone. Lance hit right over the head of Mr. Matt. Somehow I don't know how that happened. Base is a full count. He has already struck out twice against him. Would Brian send the runners? I think I'd give it a shot here. CRT and Garcia lead at second and first. The runners hold and Freeman takes ball four. So the bases are loaded. Matt Kemp will be the Atlanta hitter. The Mets get the righty righty matchup and Terry Collins, you know, is hoping for a ground ball with Kemp in the batter's box. And a golden opportunity for Matt to get his 100th RBI here and tie this game up, even with a fly ball. He went after the first pitch last time up. Fly ball, shallowly hit. Granderson's coming on. The ball's going to drop between he and Bruce. And a run is going to score. A blue pit for Matt Kemp. It's his 100th RBI. And the game is tied 1 1. You got two right fielders coming together out here. Granderson broke back, got a horrible jump. And Bruce had a play at second if he comes up throwing. They had a they had a force play at second if they wanted it. But he threw it to the second baseman instead. We won't know, but I don't know if that ball was deep enough to score a run had it been caught. So a huge break for the Braves. Gasoman leaves with the bases loaded, and now a tie game. Mazda, Georgia Power, and Xfinity. X1 from Xfinity will change the way you experience sports. Atlanta has tied the game on a blue pit by Matt Kemp for his 100th RBI. And now the bases are loaded, and it's a lefty lefty matchup for Josh Smoker, who's on for New York. Out of Calhoun, Georgia. The last seven outs he's recorded for the Mets, six have been by strikeout. 
two walks to 21 strikeouts so far since he got called up. 94 to 98 fastball with a curve and a split. You look at his numbers too. He's got the reverse splits. Lefties hitting him at 381. Righties only 143. And you know about Marcakis and his good work with runners in scoring position. A chance for Nick to do serious damage and put the Braves in front. Ability of one of those outfielders to take charge out there on that play. Really a benefit to Atlanta to keep this inning going. Right there at 95, a strike. And Nick wants that one back. Great at bats last night against Syndergaard, especially when he fell behind in the count and extended the at bat with a lot of foul balls. Smoker is really an interesting story. He was the 31st overall pick in the 07 draft. He was taken ahead of Todd Frazier and Travis Darno by the Nationals. But then shoulder problems zapped a lot of the velocity from his fastball. He was pitching in the mid 80s. He got to high A ball five years after he was drafted, and the Nationals released him. The Mets picked him up, and here he is. Sizzled foul out of play. Yeah, throwing 96 and 97, sometimes 98. He had some shoulder surgeries, torn labrum, torn rotator cuff. Ooh. There was a bone spur, he said, that was causing all that difficulty in the shoulder. Got rid of that. And he was pitching an independent ball last year and thought about hanging it up, but battled through. And made it back to the big leagues, or made it to the big leagues with the Mets. Great story. And he just missed. Wow, Darno came out of the shoot thinking that was strike three, and it almost was. Outside target. Busted it there. Easily could have gotten that borderline call. Didn't. Now he's got to throw a better strike, and Nick's ready. So it's a full count. A uh, bases loaded walk scores Garcia an RBI from Arcacus and the Braves have taken a sixth inning lead. And here comes Terry Collins. And again, he'd only walked two in his previous outings. And Smoker's asking Darno, where was that pitch? Terry Collins might ask Tony Randazzo the same question if and when the umpire comes to the mound to break up the meeting for the new pitcher. 2 1 Atlanta. The sixth inning continues after this.
Trust Park and the Battery Atlanta, then you'll want to stay tuned for a brand new weekly video series presented by the Braves called A Walk in the Park. With new videos released every Monday across Braves and SunTrust Park social media channels, A Walk in the Park is designed to keep you informed on the latest and greatest going on at SunTrust Park and the Battery. Go to Braves.com slash SunTrust Park and check it out tonight. This is Fernando Salas. They got him from the Angels on August 31st to make sure that he would be eligible for the postseason if they made it. Had some saves for Anaheim. But his numbers here have not been all that great for the Mets. Low to mid 90s fastball. Sorry, Chip. Low to mid 90s with a. Slider and a changeup. They need a ground ball here. Yeah, I beg your pardon, Joe. You might remember Salas with the Cardinals five years ago. He was their closer. And the Cardinals got him from the Mexican League. He pitched with Saltillo. Is it set up at Is that how you say it? Sounds right. Set up at It's the hat makers, right? Saltillo's hat makers. Uh huh. Then on to Anaheim now with the Mets. One ball, one strike for Tyler Flowers. Who has not had a lot of luck with the bases loaded. Two for 11 this year. A five for 43 career average. One ball, two strikes. Two one Atlanta in the sixth. Salas uses his slider a lot for his out pitch to right handed hitters and his change up against lefties. But again, with one out, he'd, he really would like a strikeout or a ground ball here, so I'm thinking slider. Popped him up. That's an infield fly. And a big second out. So the bases remain loaded. Two down for Jace Peterson. He likes it with bases. Yeah, loaded. strike out a ground out tonight. But those at bats came with nobody aboard. Tough sledding this year, but over the course of Jace's career, you're right. He's done some serious damage. Let's see what he can do now. And away, ball two. Good, good spot here, count wise, for him to try that change up. Hitters count. See if Jace can sit on it. Fastball. Front of the press box. Two and two.
Freddie Freeman 90 feet away at third. Kemp at second. Marcakis the bases loaded walk to give the Braves the lead. And now they'll be off to the races with a full count. Wow, the pitch is missing to the same spot too, up and away. Runners go 3 2. Fly ball center. Granderson on the run, retreating, slowing near the track. He's gone. And Salas pitches out of a bases loaded, one out miss. The Braves, though, take the lead. Kemp's RBI hit, and a bases loaded walk makes it 2 1. By Mazda. Julio Turan has pitched a good ball game. He made a couple of mistakes with his curveball in the third inning to start that inning, and it cost him a triple and a double and a run. But he goes back out there with the lead because Robert Gesellman ran into trouble of his own. Third time through the order, he gave up a couple of hits and a, actually three hits and a walk in the top half of this inning. Two of them scored. Reyes and Garcia with good nights so far for the Mets and Braves, respectively. Julio has the four five six hitters for New York in the sixth but now he's got a lead and more importantly major correction big Braves fan Lori McCullers tells me that set up are not hat makers I'll make sure I got that right okay. like. so is it like Serape yes okay like like a shawl yeah that okay. name basically translates to uh, shawl wearers or users okay so Corey thanks. Just confusing that with sombrero makers. Yes. No balls two strikes. Julio had a nice long rest on the bench during that inning on a humid night. See how fresh and crisp he is as he makes his 80th pitch. And it's popped up. Adonis Garcia, lone man on the left side of the diamond. He says he's got it, and he does. Granderson's 0 for 3, 1 away. Good change up. He weren't with us uh, last night talking about this guy, undrafted. Went to junior college, undrafted again. And then the Mets signed him as an undrafted free agent. 
started at King Sport, which was rookie ball in 2011. Worked his way through every stop. And in, in those stops, he hit 290, 326, 333, 306, 289, 341. Got to double A after all that, hit 358. And last year, 341 at double A got promoted to triple A and hit 306 there. And where's he from? He is from the Bronx. From the Bronx. Still lives there. Ripped and foul. A 318 career average in the minor leagues before this year, and he hit 350 to win the batting title in the Coast League. He can hit. And there are tons of players who've been undrafted, but mostly from. Latin American countries. I can't think of another undrafted North American born player who's done the kind of damage that Rivera has done as exactly. Well. He can hit. And he's proven it at every stop. 6 1 190. And he's 27 years old, 27 year old rookie. Ball two strikes to him. And he drives that one deep toward right center. And Ciarte got a correct jump. And he makes the catch two steps shy of the track. And in front of the Atlanta bullpen, there's the second out. And here's Jay Bruce. I'm not sure if they're more angry at his 0 for 2 or the miscommunication between Bruce and Granderson in the outfield. Well in his defense you want the center fielder to take charge and expect him to make the call. But Granderson got a horrible jump on that ball and broke back on it. And Jay Bruce anybody can go into a slump and have a bad time at the plate with a new ball club. But you still expect him to be the good defensive player that he was in Cincinnati. All those strikes. Wait. He is fidgeting. He is twitching and well, twisting. And he, he's trying so hard to do something big for the Mets and, and get the monkey off his back. I mean, he's hit 29 homers and driven in 91 runs combined. But not lately for this team. And in this town, you're as good as your last at bat or your last play. Swing and a drive, hammered foul. And off the facing of the third deck. Two and two. I think he broke his back. I didn't think Julio used his fastball enough in the first couple of innings. Had some long innings in the first, second, gave up the runs in the third. The last couple of innings he's using his fastball fastball a lot more and putting it in good spots. Just like that pitch he made to Cespedes to get him to pop up in the fifth. Let's see what happens with a 2 2 pitch. That's the respect he has for Jay Bruce. Back foot slider wanted him to swing over the top of it, but really overcooked it hard, almost hit him in the foot. Just didn't want to make a mistake down and into a guy who's an excellent low ball hitter.
another payoff. And Julio, look at him. Frustrated. Thought he got it by him. And he spoiled it. Just barely got a piece of it at 94. That's probably the best fastball Julio's thrown tonight. Dare throw him a change up. Yep, that's what they're going to turn. No, Julio shook it off. Bouncing ball to first. Freeman's got that. Bruce got jammed. He peels off before he gets to the first base bag. Never dropped the bat. And Tehran has a 1 2 3 sixth and a 2 1 lead in New York. Inning. Joe Simpson, Paul Bird, Chip Carey, the rest of our great Fox Sports crew. Game two. Atlanta trying to spoil the Mets. Playoff run for a second straight night. Salas back out there to face Dansby Swanson, who's got an infield hit in two trips tonight. And a base hit to left. Swanson's got two more base hits tonight against New York. That gives him 10 in 17 at bats this year. That's 10 hits out of a total of 31. <laughs> so between Chipper Jones and Freddie Freeman and now Dansby Swanson. Yeah, it's a new generation. Let's see if Julio can have an easier time getting down a bunt. The first one, he looked like a a ballet dancer pirouetting out of the way of a, a ball that was buzzing in on his hands, and he got it down with two strikes to move Swanson to second base in the third. He just took a good fastball to bunt. I know we've talked about this before, but if you haven't watched this before with respect to what Julio is doing, he moves up into the front of the box so that when he does bunt it, it, it goes into fair territory. It's not going to hit in foul territory and maybe run the risk of hitting the plate and going foul. And a key reminder to yourself is that if you've got the bat level to the ground, which you should have, and he does, 
and at the top of the strike zone then you know that anything above that is a ball don't bunt at it otherwise you might pop it up. He fouled that off his foot. And now it's a one two count. This time with two strikes Julio can't get it down in fair territory. And that'll be a strikeout for Salas. And that's the first out of the seventh inning. First strikeout for the Mets reliever. And that'll be the last batter he faces. Terry Collins is on his way to the hill. NCRT and Garcia lurking. The Mets have a well stocked bullpen here in September and. Terry doesn't want to take anything to chance. 2 1 Atlanta. Swanson at first with one out. We'll see how it works out after the break. We will have just a handful of games left at Turner Field. Six, in fact, three with the Phillies, three with the Detroit Tigers. It's the final countdown at Turner Field. All kinds of great and special and exciting events, including a fantastic final farewell to Turner Field on Sunday, October 2nd. You don't want to miss it. Go to Braves.com slash final countdown for all the details. Jerry Blevins on the pitch. Guy with a good curveball, and he likes to throw it, especially to left-handers. Even though his average against lefties wouldn't bear that out. So if I'm Ender, I'm looking for it early in the count and maybe a slow curb that I can hook through the hole on the right side. Balls and a strike. With all the talk about what has gone wrong with the health of the Mets starting rotation, what maybe hasn't been reported is how good their bullpen has been. They have stranded over 80% of would be runners and runs. Uh -huh. That's a good number. Levins has retired or has stranded 45 of the 52 he's inherited to this point. That's 86 percent success and there's that breaking ball and it's whacked into center field for a hit. You know what I love about that. 
It, you got to figure Ender was looking for it and sitting on it. He took two fastballs for strikes and look at him. He's pointing in the dugout, probably at Kevin Seitzer about stay with the curveball, and he did. Base hit. So that came on an 0 2 pitch. And again, Atlanta threatens to add to a 2 1 lead. The Mets bullpen continues to work. And no sign yet of Terry Collins. This is Garcia. He's two for three with a single and the go ahead run scored last time up. Braves so far tonight are one for six with runners in scoring position. Reason why Blevins and the Mets do so well stranding runners. Opponents have only five hits all year against this man with a runner in scoring position. High fly ball hammered toward left. Cespedes will turn. It's out of here. Adonis Garcia hits a three run homer. Remember early tonight when I said after an 0 for 5 all of these guys seem to come back the next night with a big night. Third hit for Adonis tonight and it was on the curveball. He was waiting on that baby not fooled at all. Big one. So one of those three runs is charged to Salas. Eleven serves up the homer now Freddie Freeman bats. And he unloads to straightaway center. Granderson back onto the warning track won't get it that's going to bounce off the fence. Freeman chugging for second he'll stop there. And here in the seventh inning the Braves are teeing off. Freeman extends his hitting streak to 24 consecutive games. And he's been on base now in 40 straight. And for the 20th time in a row, the Braves have tallied eight or more hits. That's awesome. Another breaking ball. I think maybe they're looking for it. Crushed 400 feet away. And Freddie ties Chipper for the Atlanta record for most consecutive games reached at 40. So 42 doubles for Freeman. The Braves have stunned the Mets with two in the sixth, three in the seventh. Lead now five to one. And with that in mind, we'll check out the other scores. Miami beat Washington tonight, one nothing. Jose Fernandez with a eight inning, 12 strikeout, no walk performance. Beat Washington on his home mound. The Cardinals lead Colorado 3-1 in the second. And later on the Giants will face the Dodgers. That's Cueto and Rich Hill. And Kemp will be walked intentionally with Nick Markakis in the on deck circle. OK so Blevins has come in and given up a single a homer and a double all on his curveball that he likes so much. So if you're Nick and you go up there now what are you going to look for he's just been beat up on his curveball I think I might have to look for the fastball first pitcher just to see if he's kind of given up on it. But it just appeared to me that when Ender got to first base and pointed in the dugout that was all about approach and suggestion from Jose Castro and Kevin Seitzer about what this guy throws and how he loves to throw that curveball. So here's Marcakis first and second with one out. A 
Elvis Garcia with a tape measure three run homer breaks open the game. It's 5 1. That was his fastball. Folks, that's really good right there. Threw him another one. That one caught a corner. Freeman's going to try to steal third. The ball in the dirt, and he's going to make it. So Freddie Freeman steals his fifth base of the year. And now a fly ball means Atlanta could steal another run. Well remember last night he took off with Kemp at the plate and Matt Fowl one off. So he's been getting a little antsy. Five for five. Kemp was left at first not expecting him to go. Two balls, two strikes. As Joe mentioned, the Braves have played the Mets tough. They're eight and nine against them this year, but they've won five of seven games here. And winning tonight as Marquez. With a rare strikeout with a man at third base in less than two outs is retired. And now Tyler Flowers the batter and he will face a new Mets pitcher. Struck him out on fastballs. So the first strikeout for Blevins. It's 5 1 Atlanta. We'll tell you about the new Mets pitcher when we come right back. MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Enjoy live look ins, highlights, game day scores, stat cast, live radio broadcasts, and more. Get MLB.com at bat on your favorite devices now. That's Rafael Montero coming into pitch. And since he's a new pitcher, time for some more instruction. And Kevin's letting Tyler and Jace know. What he throws and he does throw hard. Tyler got to face him last night and hit a BB to right field off of him for an out. So 
Tyler's 0 for 3 tonight, trying to extend a six game hitting streak. And ball one. Key thing here for Montero is you, you got to make him throw the ball over the plate. He can be a little wild. Fastball slider change. Fastball as high as 95. Those pitches close. And here's what I'm talking about: 15 walks in 14 and a third innings. Last night he had a 1-2-3 inning. Tyler lined out. Peterson grounded out. Swanson took a call third. He's a pitch away from bringing Jace Peterson to the plate, but the base is loaded. Popped up. Cabrera drifts out. Cespedes will join him, and he will call off the shortstop. And that'll retire the side. A big inning for Atlanta. Adonis Garcia cracks his 14th home run. And the Braves now enjoy a 5-1 lead at the seventh inning stretch. and bad news I'm going to tell you the bad news first Julio Tron doesn't have it tonight in 93 pitches he's only got one strikeout he's missed over the middle way too much doesn't have his good slider and his changeups non-existent now for the good news Mets only got one run what is he the best at he is the best competitor on this staff and it is beautiful absolutely beautiful that all these young pitchers can watch him compete without his best stuff and out duel all of the Mets pitchers that is the sign of a winner that is what everyone on that staff needs to see so that they can come into their own and use their great stuff to be the best pitchers they can be Chip and Joe back to you guys hey Paul those are all great points and I have a question for you when you go out there and you don't have your best stuff uh, and, and I said earlier I didn't think Julio used his fastball enough or much in the first couple of three innings. Is that typical if you don't feel like you've got your best stuff to go to your secondary stuff more often. Sometimes you give guys different looks general rule you want to establish your fastball early in the game. Specifically on the inside part of the plate you don't want to get beat in late. 
So you establish that early, and then you focus, you bring in your secondary stuff later. Sometimes you're right. When you don't have it in the pen or early on in the game, you decide you don't have it, you can start to pitch guys backwards. That's what he's tried to do, but that really didn't work either. Line to third. Loney's retired. One out. So as you brought out, he just started to throw his fastball. He missed over the middle a number of times, had some long at bats, especially with Bruce, where there was a lot of foul offs. He just couldn't put guys away. But he's doing the job. Yeah, so, he is. You know, that's a really good sign for me of a great competitor. And that's the one thing they can't put the radar gun on you is that good compete gene and ability to battle with less. That's what he's done tonight. Good point. Travis Darno hits with one out. So let me ask you this at the time where Julio was maybe nibbling a little bit didn't have a lot of confidence in that fastball. It was a one run game either way. It's not a one run game anymore. What do you expect from him now Paul and will he pitch differently with a 5 1 advantage. Well and you know now he started the inning with 93 pitches and so now you'll give guys different looks you got the bottom part of the order which I like so. Yes, now he can start to go back to that breaking ball, give guys a different look, something that um, he started early. And I'm guessing, but as you can see, even right here, he's thrown some breaking balls. And working quickly. You always want to work fast. When your team gives you the three runs, you want to get out there, go right at guys, don't walk them, make them earn everything. Popped up. Kemp will drift back a step or two and left. And Darno is retired quickly, two outs. And Alejandro Deaza grabs a bat. He's going to hit for Montero with nobody aboard. And Tehran on the cusp of his 100th pitch of the game. Well Paul all I can say is this if this isn't a night where he has real good stuff I'll take it. <laughs> He's given up <laughs> one run. And only five hits. That he may have proven what Paul was talking about. The best part of it to prove it was in this third inning when he gave up that hanging curveball triple hanging curveball double and then he was really able to bear down leave Cabrera who wound up at third base leave him there without giving up a second run. He got the next three guys Cespedes Granderson and Rivera. And to me that's the key part of it. it was in the bottom of the order. It was Cespedes who's got 13 RBIs this month. Granderson who entered this game with five hits in his previous six at bats and Rivera who hit a homer and it homered in two straight. Aaron Blair. Got his first major league win last night. And certainly locked in on watching Julio. Two balls, one strike. Say Ramirez loosening in the Atlanta pen. As the 3 1 is on the way, and it's lined right to short. Dansby Swanson had Deaza played perfectly, and Julio Tehran gives up a rocket, but he's out of the seventh in 1 2 3 fashion. 5 1, Atlanta leads it.
down the final games at Turner Field. Here's your chance to help us determine the team that re should represent 20 great years at Turner Field. A full complement of position players, a full pitching staff, all based on their work at Turner Field. Visit Braves.com slash Turner Field team now through September 26th and cast your vote. And Julio's on that uh, ballot for starting pitchers, and I, I'm confident that a lot of people, most people, are going to vote for the three Hall of Famers, but, uh, and probably Tim Hudson as well. But if you're wondering about that fifth guy, there's a good one right there. Who has pitched seven very strong and effective innings? The Braves go deeper into the Mets bullpen. This is Jim Henderson. He's the fifth man on in relief of Robert Gazelman tonight. Henderson's been around a while, a couple of different organizations. He's battled some arm injuries, but has battled back, has his fastball back. 90 to 95 with a slider. First pitch, skied toward left. And one pitch, and one out. Chase Peterson. He is 0 for 4. And here's Swanson. Two more hits for Dansby tonight. Dansby led off the seventh with a single and scored ahead of Garcia's three run homer off Jerry Blevins. Crowd tonight. Its fans were buzzing through five innings. They led one to nothing against Julio Toronto, a man that's tormented them all year long. But the Braves, with two in the sixth, three in the seventh, have for the most part silenced 30,761 patrons. Again, when you watch from our center field camera, when you watch Dansby hit, just watch and see how calm he is at the plate, how still he is. He doesn't get in a hurry, he doesn't get antsy to get that front foot down. He's waiting and using his hands. A 94 mile an hour fastball erases him. That's the second out. Good pitch. Had a good hack at it. And Malik Smith will be the batter. The first of Malik's three home runs came against Matt Harvey and the Mets. Let's see him back, see what he can do. He had a terrific run on his rehab, coming back from a broken thumb. Missed 77 games and had seven hits in five rehab games. And was really swinging the bat well before he got hurt. You bet he was. Had 34 hits in 43 games, scored 21 runs, stole 12 bags, playing good. Defense in the outfield. So 
his first homer against the Mets his other two were on May 17th against the Pirates. And he did that while hitting ninth. Ground ball to second sharply hit. And Henderson works a one two three Atlanta eighth. Top of the New York order is coming up. Braves are making life tough on the Metropolitans. In New York with you after the ball game tonight. Braves Live presented by Xfinity is coming up next. Julio Tehran with seven strong innings. Jonas Garcia with a potential backbreaking three run homer sets it up for Atlanta, which needs six outs to play the role of a spoiler for a second straight night in New York. Jose Ramirez has an excellent ERA. He's done a great job, 314. But once in a while, just like last night, and you see those 17 walks, he's, he's, he'll walk the first guy, and then he's got to work out of trouble. He gave up a walk and a hit, but no runs last night. Get this first guy. Make him put it in play. Don't walk it. And don't do anything to get this crowd back in the game. They've been sitting on their hands most of the night. Beauty. What, what noise they've made has been to express their displeasure with the performance of the hometown team. Reyes the lone Met to score tonight. Remember the Braves swept a series here in New York in June and that scored a grand total of four runs. In those three games, they've scored a grand total of four runs so far in the first two in this series. And for whatever reason, Braves have played some of their best baseball in this ballpark against this team. I think so too. To short, Dansby catches a chest high line drives. Swanson takes care of Arias for the first out. That's two straight liners to Dansby. And here's Cabrera, who's reached base three times. He single, double, walked, and has the New York RBI. That's a good read by Swanson. It's not often you charge a line drive, but he was able to read that quickly and see that it wasn't hit that hard and might die right in front of him.
Once as dribble Cabrera doubled in the third inning to score the first Mets run. Uh huh. New York has one base runner in the game. And this is the man he walked. So while maybe the stuff for Julio Tehran wasn't as impressive as we've seen before, the results sure were. Yeah. Well, he got the line drive out on the first guy, and now he's 3 0 on Cabrera. Powder River, right down the middle. But he missed with four in a row. So one on, one out. And here's Cespedes, who is 0 for 7 in this series. Thirty home runs for the Mets outfielder. Three of his last six homers have come from the seventh inning or later. That's fouled into the upper deck right behind home plate. He may be 0 for 7 in the series. But he's not trying to shorten up and go the other way. <laughs> no. Big swing there, fouled away, 0 and 2. Front door slider, I'm not sure that's what they were trying to do, but he got a swing and a foul. Protect his teammates as he did against Miami. He was suspended three games and is appealing that suspension. No balls, two strikes. A good stop by Flowers on a short hop. It's the only chance he had to back in that ball. Most of the time, at least in the old days, if you were appealing it, when you came back to New York, as the team is right now, that hearing or that discussion was held here while you're here. And punishment was meted out immediately, right? Immediately. Ouch, Cespedes got a hit. And on a one two count, he'll slowly make his way to first base. And now it's starting to get a little too close for comfort. Two on, one out in a 5 1 game. Nothing seems to come easy for these young guys. That had to hurt. I thought Cespedes had a elbow arm guard on, but he didn't. And to the point about those suspensions, once the punishment was handed down, the Mets or the Yankees, whoever was in town, would be able to play the opposing team shorthanded. Uh -huh. Thankfully, that has been put to bed. You know what's next? It's presented by Xfinity. Here's Granderson. He's 0 for 3. Cuts it off. One run is in. Granderson has a double. 
And the Mets have new life. It's five to two. I said earlier that the Mets are going to get anywhere. They needed this guy to start hitting with runners in scoring position. Well, there's a big hit. And he can hit a fastball. And he zapped that one. 52 RBIs. So here's Rivera. He hit a homer here last night. He stands in representing the tying run. A walk, a hit batsman, and a double all with one out. And the crowd now gets back into the game. Jay Bruce is on deck. Figure this will be Ramirez's last hitter. That's served toward right and no play. That was a nice play by Nick Markakis out in right field. At least temporarily, he has prevented a second run from scoring this inning. Big fastball and it just missed. Set up for a slider if he can make a good pitch with it and doesn't overthrow it. Fly ball right field. Saspidis is going to tag at third. The throw will come in toward third. The Braves trade the out for the run. It's a sacrifice fly. It's a 5 3 game. Granderson still at second. Brian Snitker is on his way out and Jay Bruce will be the hitter and Ian Cole who is loosening up will be summoned to retire him and end the bottom of the eight five three game now Mets continue to threaten we'll see how it works out in a moment.
Here is now it's Ian Cole's turn to pitch for the Braves. He's the third hurler tonight. Better numbers against right handers as you see and I, I don't mind the fact that the Mets are going to pinch hit for Bruce here. Uh, even though he's been struggling for this reason. Ian Crow's last outing was a couple of days ago at home. He was brought in to pitch to Bryce Harper who got a base hit off of him. Then he pitched to Clint Robinson a left handed hitter and he hit him. So two lefties he didn't retire either. He's got a right hander up there now. Campbell's one for seven in a pinch. He's hitting a buck 59 and 63 at bats for New York this year. So we'll see how this works out. There for a strike. Eighty three games for Campbell at Triple A. He hit seven homers, drove in forty seven, hit three oh one. A sinking fastball cut on a mist. Well, it was too. Started him with a slider and ninety six. Kroll has Campbell at his mercy 0 and 2. If Campbell reaches Kevin Plowecki a catcher is in the on deck circle. Campbell he had a 390 on base percentage. So he will take a walk. If you pitch him too carefully two balls two strikes. He was late on the fastball earlier I think I just stay with it. Late again. Was in a good spot on the outside corner. About to hop over there inside, like they might try to throw a back foot slider. That shatters, and the ball rolls foul on the right side. And that's what the pitch was. And he came that close to swinging and missing. Caught the bat right on the end. Six fastball, middle of the plate, belt high. Tyler was set up away, but it came down the middle. And Julio Tehran's got to be sitting in the clubhouse going, not again, please. 
All three runs charged to Ramirez. A walk and a hit batsman. The two most painful plays. And now Kevin Plowecki with a man at first represents the go ahead run. Now a 5 4 eighth inning game. Fiddle around here, the more likely it is you have to face the two, three, and four hitters in the ninth. Yep. Oh, what a cut. Well, they've had some clutch hitting this inning after they got a gift walk and a gift hit batsman. Double a sack fly and a clutch single by Campbell. That was a great at bat by Eric Campbell. One ball, one strike. Runner goes. Pitch bounced toward third. And it got through Garcia. And Campbell's on his way to third base, and that's where he'll stand. Everything coming apart at the seams for the Braves in the eighth inning, and the Mets have him at the corners. Trailing by a run. Like an in-between hop for Garcia, the runner going. I don't know if he was distracted or not. But he didn't have to move much for it. Came up and off his glove or hip. So now Tyler Flowers has to be on his toes. Anything in the dirt, he's got to surrender his body and do everything he can to keep Campbell at third. He's the tying run. Travis Darno, the catcher, has hit the ball in the air three times. He's 0 for 3. Scored an E5. His thumbs. Dansby's got it. He's going to throw the first in time, and that retires the side. But eight Mets come to the plate. Three of them score. A walk, hit batsman, an RBI double, an RBI single, and we've got a one-run game. Lead. As you look at the defensive changes for the Mets, Eric Campbell is going to stay in the game and play first base for James Loney. 
Jay Bruce taken out of the lineup. Michael Conforto checks into play right. And another one of the unsung heroes in the Mets bullpen is Addison Reed. He's done a terrific job this year, and he will try to keep the Braves from adding to their five run total. Well, he's been a closer before, and he has done an outstanding job of setting up, setting up maybe arguably the best closer in the game in Curious Familia. 176 ERA, 83 strikeouts, and 71 plus innings. Hard sinker, hard slider. And throws across his body. Very tough to pick up. So Reed's going to hit seventh. Conforto's going to hit ninth for New York. Which means Conforto will lead off the bottom of this inning. Top of the order's up for the Braves. Enciarte's reached three more times, two singles. And he scored two runs. And he got pushed off the plate. Ciarte ought to know all about Addison Reed. They were teammates with the Diamondbacks. The Mets got him August 30th last year. Just in time for him to be eligible for the full season roster. And he pitched in 17 games in the regular season. Nine games during the Mets playoff run of the World Series. Fly ball left. Cespedes is there, but he can't hang on. A sinking line drive. Cespedes couldn't keep it in the glove. And Enciarte has his third hit in as many at bats. Left one upstairs, fought off basically by Ender. All right, try to make a shoestring catch, couldn't hang on to it. Big night for Garcia, three for four. The big blow, a seventh inning, three run homer. And he's tangled with Addison Reed before, and he's had good luck. Let's go back to late June. Garcia versus Reed. At Turner Field. Little revenge for Reed there. He heated him up with a 92 mile an hour fastball. So one on, one out. Here's Freddie. The on base streak is still alive. The hitting streak is still alive. 383, 23 RBIs in 30 games here. Last three. Remarkable 40 game on base string. Freddie Freeman has 29 extra base hits and 40 RBIs. A 
another of both in this inning would be welcome. They'll have to work overtime behind 0 2. Sequences for Reed after the leadoff hit. Garcia and Freeman are down on strikes. Now Matt Kemp. Those are all sliders to Freddie. And it's a hard slider again. Jim Johnson worked in last night's game in a non save situation. Gave up a couple of hits and a run. He is throwing hard. Strike one to Matt, whose hit streak was extended to 12 games with an RBI single in the sixth. His 100th RBI. Yeah, that was a key play in the game. That was the one that dropped in between Granderson and Bruce. And the other was a sixth inning walk to Freddie Freeman. When the Mets thought they had him struck out, that extended the inning, and the Braves went on to get two runs that inning. Two pitchers in almost the identical spot. Yeah, this guy is awfully good. Rounded toward third. Reyes has it. He'll toss to second in time. And Addison Reed works around a leadoff hit to Ender and Ciarte. Last chance for the Mets. Jim Johnson will face Conforto, Reyes, and Cabrera. It's a 5 4 Braves game. Another victory for Julio Tehran tonight. Emilio Bonifacio checks in for Matt Kemp. He's in left. And the Chief Jim Johnson he is on to try to save the day for the Braves with the 9 1 and 2 hitters coming up for New York. 60th game for Jim as he comes in looking for his 16th save of the year. And of course, on the road, a one run ball game, the all important leadoff guy, and that'll be Conforto. Jim Johnson has retired 71% of his first batters. That's a good number. 42 out of 59. And he's got a 160 ERA since June 3rd. Conforto, Reyes, and Cabrera are coming up. You'd prefer not to see Cespedes or Granderson in the ninth inning tonight.
Good start to the sequence. Strike one. I don't even want to see Cabrera the way he's swinging the bat. But you're going to have to. Let's just hope there's nobody on. Back to the mound. A one hopper. There's a good start. Conforto hit it hard, but Johnson fielded cleanly. And here's Reyes. One away. Dansby playing right behind the bag out there. Positioned perfectly, but didn't need him. Jim handled it. There have been times already in this series where Reyes has been real overly aggressive on the first pitch. Let's see if he is here or if he's going to make Jim throw him a strike. He's taking all the way. Sounds like the old days between the Braves and Mets in the ballpark now, doesn't it? Oh, thank you very much. One and two. Exactly the same pitch that Freddie Freeman got run up on earlier tonight. A fastball starts in, comes back right up there at the top of the zone. Good call. So here is Cabrera and nobody on. That's a relief. The Braves have not gotten him out tonight. Two hits, two walks, a run scored, and an RBI. Asked if it was a good pitch, the answer was yes. Freddie Freeman hugging the line at first base. Cabrera played as a pull hitter on the infield. Cespedes one more time and a chance for New York with one swing of the bat to walk off. Well it's Cabrera's night he'll make way for a pinch runner but when you can just wave that magic wand like that and find a hole that's that's something. Ty Kelly's going to be the pinch runner. And to go back to what we said in the eighth inning. The walk, the hit batsman, and the error. Three more batters came up for the Mets in that inning. And with a base hit here, you're forced to face Cespedes in the ninth inning with the game on the line. That's when he's at his best. Situations like this is what earned him another trip through New York with what he did last year for these guys down the stretch. Two pitches not close. He'll 
be very tough to walk here. He wants to swing it and he wants to win it. He made Jim throw a strike and he did. Two and one to count. I'm shocked. Two old hitters count for this guy. And he took a fastball right there. Yep. He swung so hard he sat down. And that pitch wasn't a strike. And now the Braves are a strike away from ending the game. Power sinker right there. So far enough. Two balls, two strikes. Sinker's coming again. A breaking ball, and Cespedes <laughs> strikes out, <laughs> and the Braves beat the Mets again. Whoa! And it was up in the zone too, and it was like a, a delayed reaction from Cespedes. So the Braves survive and beat the Mets. A surprise party, a breaking ball that Cespedes. Couldn't do anything with. Oh, he flinched, Chip. He flinched like he was going to go out of the way, and then he realized it was going to be a strike. He was like, oh no. An emergency hack. Oh, baby. So the Braves beat New York for the second straight game. Adonis Garcia with a big homer. Julio Tehran with seven innings of one run ball. And Jim Johnson saves the day. And the Braves have won another series here in New York. A chance to complete a surprising sweep tomorrow night. Wow, plenty to talk about. Braves win at 5-4.